Hey everyone, welcome to another podcast with Mastermind Advisor Marketing. My name is Vince Oldry. I'm here again with Josh Woodward, our marketing specialist. And today we're going to kind of piggyback off of last week a little bit, just because we know that some advisors had struggled with the smoke screens. But then as I was talking with some other advisors, they were struggling with their own numbers. And we've done this before where we kind of talked about like ROI, but there's a lot of triggering factors that are happening here. It's not just the smoke screens, there is, there's also the marketing part to it that is actually hurting people in their numbers and their closing. And so, yeah, some of those smoke, those smoke screens might be legitimate because they're actually doing it, you know, in a, in a way that, you know, the, However, they were drawing the, that person in, they're trying to like flip them over or pull the switch on them, so to speak, to get them to become a client. So again, Josh, welcome. Thank you. I know you're in beautiful, hot, sunny Arizona. Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully everyone can hear me all right. I know the camera is probably not so great, but I'm hiding in a bedroom right now in Arizona. So it's good to have some AC. The kids aren't going to get you. I'm sure they'll pop in. We'll see. We'll see if we can make it. <laughs> jury's still out on that one all right no. be a good one. well i i think I, I think you know what's happening here is um so i was getting a text over the weekend from an advisor and he said he he had like 80 some people register 30 or 40 people attend his webinar and eight people booked an appointment and he's doing some other marketing program and i'm like that's great but no one cares about those numbers. How much did you close? And he's like, well, you know, my marketing's fine. It's, it's me. I'm like, okay, but how much did you close? He's like, well, you know, my average case size is 1.8 million. And, you know, I'm getting in front of people. I'm like, okay, great. But how much did you close? <laughs> he's like, well, last year I closed like 2.2 million. And I don't know if he listens to this or not, but Obviously, he knew he needed to work on himself, but I don't think it's just himself that's the issue here. It's it's also potentially the marketing because it's depending on how that marketing funnel starts off and where it ends. And I think that that's also the potential issue here. And I think people don't know their numbers that well. I know you had a conversation with an FMO on the same yeah. same thing. Yeah, it's funny. I mean, it's this goes back to like I mean the ego thing too. It's cool because like even when we talk to new advisors that are coming on board with us, they're like looking at their numbers and bragging about how many people attend their webinars and, and how many appointments were booked. And then you, you look at the cost per appointment, which is good. And then, then you look at the cost per close and the clients are bringing in and it's, it's completely flip sided. So um, i not saying the system that we do is a lot better, but it's, it's all depending on the advisor and if it fits what, at the end of the day, what you're trying to do. Right. And so, um, and, and topic plays a, a big role in that and to help with those numbers so recently i had a conversation with an fmo on this and he was talking about how how great the success was but you know they're pulling the social security kind of pull to it right and then trying to convert into like a, a planning or an annuity sale and those people coming to the funnel he said a lot of them felt like it was kind of a, a bait and switch sort of pull yeah you're just not going to get the the numbers essentially that you you know that most advisors want on the ROI, they, they've, at the beginning, they're happy, right? Because they're meeting with a bunch of people. They are having, uh, well, one, there's a lot of people that are showing up. And then two, there's a lot of meetings being had, but then I call it a lot of free consulting that's going on because you're trying to switch them to the, you're usually what you're offering is like a social security analysis. And I know there's another big one, like the required minimum distribution, which the RMDs, is another big topic and i know that's pulling a lot of people but the problem is again is if you're just pulling them right at the beginning of that part of the funnel again we have to look at the entire funnel here how it's you know how it's going through the sequences and your offer is an rmd calculation well they're going to come to the with that rmd calculation if you're trying to sell them an annuity how are you going to spin that Most people just take their RMD calculation or their social security analysis and say, thanks. And they go back to the other advisor. I mean, it's unfortunately that's what, it, that's, you know, what it is versus 
you know, in my, in my opinion, when we're doing like the, when we're doing a, a retirement plan or full retirement plan in session, we're, we're actually getting the people that are looking for that help. They want someone to help them with the retirement planning. The only pro the only point of that smoke screen that we talked about last week was they've been sold. They've gone to many webinars, many seminars. They've already been, you know, pitched straight from the RMD calculation to, Hey, now let me buy, sell you annuity or let me take your money under management. Or they've went to a social security workshop and then they're trying to get bait and switch again. And so that they, they're, they're going to have their guard up. And then that's why we have to get those, through those smoke screens. But if you look at your numbers and this guy, he told me, he's like, I, last year I met with, I should have closed like 30 million in, in production. And I'm like, all right, well, you're getting in front of a lot of good people. We need to meet, we need to meet because I, it's probably is, you know, a little bit him, right? Like we talked about those smoke screens, but number two is probably the way you're drawing those people in is probably not the best format you're doing an RMD or a social security analysis versus people want a retirement plan, retirement planner. That's why they're coming to meet with me because they want someone to help them with the retirement plan, the full thing, not just, you know, RMDs or not just Roth conversions or social security. They want the full thing. And so they're vetting me through that process. Same thing when it comes to our seminars, they want the full retirement plan. They don't just want, you know, to buy a product now. If you're trying to sell a specific product, then we might as well build the marketing around that specific product and just go right at, you know, just sell that product. Right. Yeah. And so far, it, it's all based on the funnel. I mean, and, and we kind of know this, we can kind of talk from experience on this because we've tried it. I mean, we've, we've ran, you know, a social security ebook, right. And tried to then push them to a social security webinar and then try to sell them a plan. And it's just, you try and true these funnels and you try to build something and segment people and try to offer them something that they're not interested in. It's just not going to work. And so, get someone in the door that is targeted for what you're looking for. Even if it is an RMD calculator, well then you got to talk about RMDs for the offer. Or um, if it's a 401k analyzer, then you, you know, that whole appointment process all the way from beginning to end should be about 401ks. That's why they came in that front door. Right. So um, when you're ever looking at an offer, you should, it can come at the end of the day on, on how you're doing that appointment. Right. And there are tricks and, and stuff and ways to help and, um, advice that can be given, but sometimes it will take a look at the full marketing funnel to see maybe it's the funnel that's helping your closing. You know, you can't base all your numbers off of just you taking it personal as an advisor and not being able to close virtual. You know, maybe it's something at the very beginning and how they came in, or maybe it's in the middle of it and on the retargeting aspect of things. And so the idea, and I feel like this can be confusing for a lot of advisors because they're already looking at all their other business numbers. Like Vince, you know this, like there's a lot of other stats you have to keep keep track of, let alone your client's returns. Um, but marketing is, is one where you can't, you can't sleep on your numbers, right? I mean, there's some advisors that will spend a fortune and, and not realizing their overall returns is not there. And so just because they think that it's performing well. Um, and so it, it's key to pay attention to the numbers and, and that should dictate your judgment, just like anything else with you know, being a financial advisor, you know, you're not making client decisions, right? Off of just gut instinct and, and how you feel or whatever, you know, you're going off of pure numbers and, and analytics. I think marketing should be seen that, that same way. Yeah. I'll, I'll take my own financial planning practice, for example, where we do, we still do in-person seminars. We do the educational format where we go to a local library, college, university. And uh, there's one community center that we go to that doesn't always get the most people there, but when I would do it there, I would get a million dollar client every time. Well, Mike's been doing them there. And I looked at the last four or five that he's done there at that particular location. And he's gotten maybe two clients. And so then I calculated how much it cost me for each one. I'm like, Mike, it doesn't make sense for me to keep doing these at this location because it doesn't make sense for me to put this much, this much money into this location and you get one or two clients out of it because I'm spending... I think it was like 10 grand or more per client for that location. And then I got my freaking appointment center over here. It's like, well, the place is so cheap. It doesn't cost that much money to go there. Yeah, I don't care. It doesn't matter. I'm paying a bunch of money to, to fill it, right? So that, yeah. let's look at numbers logically here. 
And um, so I'm like, no, Mike, we're not doing you. You're banned from. <laughs> so you're banned from doing seminars there. <laughs> so if we do a seminar there, then I I'll do it because I I have I must work better with that group of people. Um, now, Mike's Mike has some of his biggest clients from that location for sure, but not. Uh, it's just not worth paying that much money because the the return on that investment just isn't going to. It's going to take a long time to recoup that. So I don't, I'm not going to do them there for them anymore. My team knows that. Um, and then there's other locations that we've looked at that we tried. And if they don't, if they're not working, we'll just, Hey, we can't keep doing them there. You know, yeah. if you're not going to get clients, the same thing with the webinar side. Hey, if you're not closing people on the webinars, we got to look at how you're doing it. Not just like, are you getting in front of enough people? It's, if you've got in front of 10 people and you haven't closed one, we need to figure out what's going on with your meeting process. And a lot of times people say, wow, oh, they're just throwing up their, they say they just want to know how to take Roth conversions or RMDs, or they're not looking for a planner. Or, and that's why we talked about the smoke screens last week, right? right? To help go through that. And if you want to go through that last episode, by the way, because we, we went through that last week, make sure to go to mastermindadvisor.com. I think all of our latest podcasts are up there. Or go to you know go to YouTube. Just type in Mastermind Advisor. You'll find our YouTube, and we post them on YouTube as well. But go watch that because we do talk about like the different smoke screens, and it should give you some confidence knowing that if you're getting those types of smoke screens, you should be able to move out around them and not just you know say oh, I give up. It's not. I, I, it's too tough. I can't. You know they, they don't. These leads aren't qualified. Blah blah. blah. Now. There's two parts to that, right? It's they might not be qualified technically if they're not going through that right funnel like we talked about. Okay. So if you're doing social security workshops or you're doing uh, RMD workshops and your end goal is to then give them a social security analysis or an RMD analysis, it's going to be hard to switch them around to whatever they're doing. Right. The Roth conversions, the same thing. The Roth conversions, majority of the time, even though it's a good poll, the majority of the time, most of them don't need to do a Roth conversion. And and so then here you are telling them what they've already known, but they're just like, oh, maybe I thought you had some sort of trick up your sleeve. Nope, I don't. Okay. Yeah. And I'm, I'm a little nervous. I mean, to this podcast, right? Because I, I mean, the smoke screens, that, that conversation was a really good one for advisors to listen to and, and answer that. And now we're kind of doing one that's like, you know, if you have a lot of smoke screens, well, maybe it's the funnel, but I also want to make sure it's like, we'll make it apparent. Like, even if you're getting good appointments, like even, you know, this guy, like there are probably tips and tricks that we can give him to help him close more appointments, right? He's getting them. They're in the door. You can close. Correct. It, my last, my biggest fear right, is now we're giving someone an excuse to be like, ah, oh, it's not me. It's, it's the marketing or, you know, instead of yeah. or being like, it's not the marketing, it's me, but there's a fine line between both of them. Right. And, and you need to find the perfect middle ground for that tour for advisors and so um and that and how you find out those numbers is, is just peer looking analytically uh at the results right we have advisors that will they'll pay you know four four fifty cost per appointment um but they're happy because those prospects you know are, are high net worth you know it, it only takes you know two to three of them before I mean, it takes one right to recoup their investments, but as soon as they have like the, the, the third and the fourth, they're already making a good profit because they're a million, a million and a half, two, and, and they're closing them. So it's like, even like what you were saying, like you close a million dollar client, but you can even have the opposite, right? Where like you, like St. Thomas, for instance, in, in your location, it pulls really well, but imagine it pulls well, but your average account size there is like 150. Like it doesn't make sense to keep going there, right? So if you look at the numbers on both sides, you're getting really good numbers. All right, was it good quality? Great. Am I closing them? No. What's going on? And vice versa. All right, I'm getting low numbers, but is it quality? Yes. Am I getting appointments? Yes. Am I closing and bringing assets? Yes. At the end of the day, is your ROI positive? And that's correct. And how you get there is that's how that's any where business most, runs. That's where I was, I was beating them up. Yeah. That's why I was beating this guy up because I was like, so quit talking to me because we I talked to this guy last year and Brett, you know, he was talking about how good his numbers were and how much he's getting in front of, but then he only closed two point two million or something like that. And I'm like, dude, what what's going on? Like, so that's why I said, Hey, 
we need to meet because I can I can almost for sure figure out that there's probably something going on with the with the meeting process. I already know there's something going on with the marketing, but then there's also got to be something going on with the meeting process because yeah, you're, if you're getting in front of that many chances, <laughs> yeah, there's something else going on too, right? So we need to work on both aspects and that's, that's almost any advisor, even myself, you know, I, it's always good to go back and work on myself and try to, you know, make sure I'm closing the right way. And there's times where I know I screw up and I'll, I'll admit it, but with a lot of these, these situations, the marketing, for example, like dinner seminars versus the educational seminars, you can do dinner seminars. There's nothing wrong with them. They work. You know, you can get in front of people. If I were to do a dinner seminar, I'd probably want to do it around, around retirement planning or taxes and retirement just because taxes will draw in a little bit better quality. But what I've seen is that the average case size or the average person that comes through the door has less than half a million. And so then you're doing a little onesie twosies all over the place and yeah. trying to make your money back. And you spend a lot more money to get your money back, right? So on the educational format, especially if we're not using mail and we're doing digital like we are, and then we're, you know, we're going to the library or college or, or community center like I've, I've been doing where the community center costs me like 50 bucks. I don't, it doesn't take me much to get the ROI, but then I'll need to close like one or two people to well be beyond my, what I need because it doesn't cost me a lot. I don't spend five, $6,000 on the mail and I don't buy, spend another 2,500 or um, I forget my, what my minimum was at McCormick's and Schmick's, but it was, it was not very cheap. I mean, I brought a lot of wine, bottle of wine home, bottles of wine, <laughs> bottles of wine home, not bottle, bottles of wine home. And uh, I don't think they were supposed to let me do that, but they, you know, they still corked them. Right. And then I had like a bag <laughs> full of, because I never, sometimes I didn't hit my minimum and I just be, what I would do sometimes I would, I'd at least eat dinner you, you there paid for it, right? so I could give them, you know, a good, yeah, a good, good 1500 or $2,500 meal. But and I had a couple of beers at least, but, uh, that's, that's the difference in marketing, right? So looking at those two different things, there's differences in the marketing part versus then you have the meeting process, right? And then that's where we have those smoke screens and that kind of thing. But that's what, when I'm talking with, um, this advisor about, you know, he's met with all these people or like the FMO that you're talking about. Yeah. We're getting advisors in front of tons of people. It gets the advisor really excited, right? Because they feel like they're doing a good job by getting in front of all these people, but then they feel like absolute crap because they're not closing them. And there's those two reasons, right? It's either the smoke screens. They don't know how well, you know, how to handle those, those smoke screens or two, it's, it's the marketing. Now you're right, Josh, we might be giving people a an excuse on the marketing side. I don't want to go that far because it, the marketing part, you know, if you're, if you're going down, like think about what your offer is at the end, what is your offer? Is your offer to build a retirement plan? And, and usually what that means is people are inviting you to see if you know what you're doing and that you can help them. Just like I, there's a guy last week that I was meeting with, I was help, I'm helping this other advisor, Scott. And, um, the guy just left his other advisor because he wasn't, he was just getting investment help. He's like, do you do all this stuff? Finance planning, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, yep. So here's our finance plan. Here's where we enter everything in. Here's, you can track, track your progress because I use Red Capital. So I was showing everything that we were, we're using. And he's like, great, that's exactly what I'm looking for. He was looking for someone that could help him with the full financial plan, not just, you know, work with on the investments. He wanted ideas on what he should do. And then his wife was there at the last meeting. And then um, basically went down to the closing questions, how much do you cost? And, and so I knew once we're going down to how much, you know, what do we charge and that kind of thing, we were getting down to, all right, we're getting close to the end because he likes us. He just wants to, all right, can I, you know, make sure I'm not, make sure I ask the right question so I don't get gouged. Okay. What do you cost? And you're going to double dip and that kind of stuff. So that was because we went down the financial planning path, not because we went down the, 
let me build you a social security analysis path. Okay. People know the whole bait and switch. If people know I'm building them a financial plan, they already know the elephant. They already know the big elephant in the room. They know that I want to have them as a client, but they're trying to vet me through that process. Versus the social security. I used to do social security seminars. I had so many people that came through the door, they get the social security analysis and then out they went because they went back to their advisor that they didn't see it as like a, a value, you know, like a big value add afterwards. Yeah. I mean, like, I think that's cool, I it's all I about, I mean, this whole conversation is all about, I feel like knowing your numbers, like even on the marketing side for myself, like it's, it's good for me as a marketer, right? Cause I can say, Hey, I got you all of this. Right. And then you're like, well, I still need an ROI, but like even on marketing on, on my side, when I'm optimizing like an advisor's ads, right. I'm, I'm looking at their cost per download for their leads. All right. If that's optimized, great. All right. Now what's their cost per registration? What's their cost per show? All right. What's their cost per appointment? Are you closing? And then each stage you're trying to optimize it and get that. Right. And that's the same thing for an advisor. You, you look at each stage at what you're paying for. And even if you have a positive ROI, all right, now where can I optimize it? Where can I get the results? And that's kind of where this is like this individual, right? It's like, Maybe he's getting good in the front end. His appointments are bad, but are, where can I optimize it? Or where can I change it to help me close better at the end? You know, things like things like that. And it's just, it's just knowing your numbers. And, and dinner seminars probably worked well. You know, you, you make money, but is there a better way or a way you can get the same result and it costs less? Then all of that changes, right? And and then the game changes. And you know, that's that's what advisors are trying to do, right? It's just purely optimize their practice and, and grow it to what they can do. So always, yeah, right. Everyone wants free money, right? Yeah, I think they want <laughs> spend the as little and make as much as possible. At the end of the day, <laughs> yeah. you know, they want. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we we do this to help people, but we do this to make money too. So it's not. I mean, let's let's be real with each other here. We're we're not <laughs> we're not in this business to do it for free. Um, at least. The majority of people I know aren't willing to do this for free. You know, that financial planning is actually a very rewarding job. Uh, you get to help people and you get paid well doing it. I think too often we do find ourselves in that trap where we're stuck always trying to sell because we're trying to come out of that hole. And then we're trying to find that thing that's going to get us in front of the most people as possible. And because if we know if we get in front of a lot of people, then we might have the most at bats. That's not always true, right? And that's why, you know, when that's why with our system, like the one that we that we built, I want the at bats to just be my appointments. I don't want the at bats to be with everyone that just books an appointment with me. Okay, like I, that's why I make them go download the guide, register for the webinar, watch the webinar, and schedule time. Now, can we do it in a different way? Yeah, we can. We have people. We can have people just go straight to a webinar, watch a webinar and book an appointment. We used to do that all the time. It just was filling my calendar. And then I was finding out I wasn't spending as much time as I wanted to with these people because it wasn't as qualified because I'm trying to I'm trying to dig more stuff out versus using the webinar as that first meeting platform, essentially. Right. So, you know, when in my eyes, the webinar is being that first appointment for me, helping me filter and then just landing me quality appointments versus advisors would rather, some advisors would rather have that on-demand webinar as many appointments on their calendar. They want 60 appointments on their calendar every month. And it's like, well, that's all fine and good, but what are you closing? Okay. And, and that's where, you know, the, where everything comes to, where the rubber meets the road, right? Where are we getting the results, the ROI out of it? And, and sometimes, yeah, some advisors just need a lot of appointments. I mean, I think about like smart asset, like, holy cow, people are paying a lot of money. Like we should be charging a lot more money for every appointment we book, by the way. But anyway, I mean, that's just like, when you think about smart asset, they charge, I think it's like 850. If you want a transferred appointment, you know, live appointment, and you have no idea if it's even worth <laughs> meeting with, like they just went online, they filled out a form. And that's it. They filled out some quiz and that's it. And there was like, you have no idea how motivated that person is at that point. They could be looking, they might not be looking. Absolutely insane. I mean, we, we can collect a lead for under five bucks, right? And if you think about smart asset doing that, a live lead, 
they get 10 appointments for whatever, 50 bucks. Then people call on the phone and they're selling to you for 800 It's like, and there's something to that funnel, right? But we're in the business to, we, I mean, we're in the business to make money, right? But at the same time, we know it's like relationship building too. Like it's a small industry. So if you have a bad rep, it's just, you know, I feel like smart assets kind of in that format, right? Some advisors can do really good at it and they can close, but um, for the vast majority, of it, it's just looking at numbers and, and your time. Yeah, you, you look at uh, smart asset and the, you know, you can get in front of a lot. I mean, you can get a lot of names of smart asset, right? A lot of leads. And, you know, just like the guy that the advisor I was talking about earlier, same thing. You can have a ton of leads or a ton of people you're meeting with, but how much are you closing? And and then you got to look back, okay, how much am I spending and how much am I closing? So when someone says it's the marketing well, then I'm going to go look at, okay, how that person comes to the funnel. Okay. Yeah. That might be the marketing. And then there's another, <laughs> there was a guy last year that we worked with. I think we put him in front of 110 people. You might know who I'm talking about. It was working so well that he decided to try to copy in our system, even though he said, we're not worth it anymore. He doesn't want to talk to us anymore. And then, then he copied all of my stuff <laughs> and <laughs> tried to, I had to send it like a cease and desist because like he literally copied my entire webinar, my entire funnel. And I said, I don't care if you copy the funnel, just don't take my slides. Don't take my, my, you know, like my copyright stuff, go make your own stuff. And, and so and then he got pissed when I said that, or like when I sent him a cease and desist, he's like, what are you talking about? I don't know what you're talking about. We've been ever copied. I'm like, dude, you sent me an email to sign up for your webinar. I'm like, Oh, let's just, kind of funny it looks very similar so i signed up for it watched the webinar i'm like those are my exact slides so go make your own dude it's okay like you know you gotta put yeah. some effort if you're gonna make your own i don't care if you want to do your own own funnel but i just think it's so funny he had so many appointments getting from a lot of quality he could not close and his biggest issue again was uh, he actually got through the smoke screens his biggest issue was uh, if someone had $2 million, he would try to uh, do an else. He tried to sell them a million and a half dollar annuity. He just, he went, he went, he went whale hunting every single time. He was trying to get the big whale annuity commission and it's fine, but it's not going to work. Not with the higher net worth people. It just, a lot of the higher net worth people, they'll still do annuities. They just don't want to do all their assets in an annuity. Now, if you, if you're doing like the 500,000 or less people, it's a little bit different. You could probably do 250, you know, compared to like 250 plus 250 under management or 300, or maybe even a little bit more. But if you look at your average size, when you're meeting with someone with 2 million, you might be doing four or 500, $600,000 case. Yeah. It's not half the, the prospect, the prospects of more money, but it's a decent chunk and you're making more. So I know with him, it wasn't the marketing. It was, the advisor on how he did the process, you know, how he met with people with the guy that I'm talking about from earlier, it's probably a little bit of both. Yeah. I mean, honestly, it's probably both, yeah. but I don't know. Cause I got to meet with him here, learn what his meeting process is. And then, but I can almost guarantee, I mean, he's a big annuity guy, so I can almost guarantee you where it's going to go. It's going to go down to something where they, they try, you know, again, you're trying to get safe money out of them. So you're trying to get them to say, I don't want your risk. And then you, show them, you know, high net worth prospect that you're going to throw a million or two in, into the annuity and then you're going to lose them because the majority of people that are higher net worth, they just don't want to spend their money. They don't want to touch. I mean, they want to spend their money, but they don't want to touch the principal. And so if you just, if you change your process a little bit, it, it's easy. Yeah, absolutely. So. Um, I'm not working short on, on time here, but you know, the key thing is you know, know, know your numbers, know where it's at, see where the adjustments are made. We're happy to help like just give our true honest opinion like this advisor you know vince is going to meet with them and if it's not the marketing vince is going to say it's the marketing just to close them right we're not that's not the goal he's going to say i would change x y and z this is what i've learned just do that and you'll be fine um you know we're happy to, to give advice where we want because the other thing I'm, I'm a little afraid of this with this podcast is like i don't want to go out and have all advisors start telling me that they're trying to chase the the golden goose or like the next big idea right because they're marketing has slowed down or hasn't done that great. Um, maybe there's just ways to optimize that, right? And if you look at trends, and I've had this conversation, I think 
um, with an advisor who's been doing like content, right? And we all know content's a long form game, but it's like, do I quit? And it's like, I don't know, look at your numbers. Is like, even like our podcast and our YouTube channel, like, you know, some days it's like, man, we don't have that many views or, you know, not that many people liked it or we're not getting that much feedback on this episode. But you just look at the trend of the growth and you, you kind of follow that map and like, maybe, maybe over time you can see the continuous of what you put in previous, right? So like, a lot of advisors that we work with, you know, sometimes the webinar pulls and it starts a little slow, but if you look at the trajectory of it all, you can look like two or three months down the road and you can start seeing like, I have to spend less on marketing and now email optimization and I'm getting three to four appointments at $100, $120 cost per appointment. But maybe in the beginning it costs three, 350. If you look at the trajectory, right? Is it going up? Is it going down? Your case uh, with that location, you know, it was working really well in the past. It's starting to go down. All right, my, you know, Mike, you're, you're kicked out, but you go back and you look at the trajectory and, you know, the appointments are coming back in and you just kind of follow the numbers and just game plan. Don't jump ship, but just make, make the adjustments where, where it needs to be made. And, um, if you see growth potential, maybe, maybe you, I wouldn't say ride the ship, but just pay attention to it and, and see if it makes sense to, to continue that, that growth. But. Yeah, for the most part, if anyone's looking for any sort of advice on virtual closing or anything like that, don't hesitate to, to reach out, shoot, shoot an email, support a mastermind advisor, and we'll give honest feedback. You know, yeah, we are a business and, you know, yeah, we're working with advisors, but at the end of the day, we're happy to help. Hence doing the podcast, hence doing the YouTube videos. You know, it's not, we're not making money off YouTube. We're not making money off these podcasts. Um, it's pure just to try to provide value. It would be cool. Yeah. So if there's any sponsors, you know, cool. but no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> any affiliates out there? I'm happy to know. drink, you know, Schwab, uh, beer Schwab, on, you on camera if you need me to. You know, so. No. Founders, you know, if you're curious. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll exactly. Put a big neon bush exactly. light sign in the back if I need to. But in all seriousness, you need me to. a lot of this is for advice <laughs> and, and to help. Well, good, man. Yeah, I... And if you go back to our other YouTubes, I mean, like we share a lot of secrets yeah. in the trade, you know, how to build ads, how to build funnels. And it's not, you know, we don't need to make, keep this or make this a secret. At the end of the day, the idea behind this, okay. If, I mean, if we want to pull the elephant out of the room, the old adage is we give, 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 and then you either want to work with us or you don't want to work with us. And a lot of times, eventually what will happen, and then sometimes it takes a year or two for someone to want to work with you. It's the same thing for you as an advisor, when you're reaching out to prospects, you need to do all that little, all the little things. Okay. Even though you don't see the fruits of your labor at the beginning, you will down the road. And, uh, you know, I, I know there are advisors that we've met that, that are working with us now that have been listening to this or um, have been getting our emails or seen my ads mm -hmm. for years, right? And they're just like, I keep seeing your dang face mm -hmm. on my Facebook newsfeed. <laughs> like, really? That's not intentional. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is intentional, right? It's the same marketing strategies that we use for financial planning. It's not, it's not, nothing's different. It's a little bit more um, grassroots marketing, right? We're not, we're not trying to do big brand. We're not trying to do massive blasts or anything like that. We're, we're, we're only trying to target the people that really want to work with us. So what I would suggest that you would do if you're listening is go check out our other YouTube channel or go check out our YouTube channel. Uh, so go to YouTube mastermind advisor, uh, marketing. I think just, yeah, just search mastermind advisor marketing. You'll find our YouTube channel. No problem. Uh, if there's any ads, make sure you watch them all the way through though. Just, <laughs> just, yeah, just kidding. Um, but go there, watch all Click on them too. We get eight hours. Yeah, click, through, through. Yeah. <laughs> click on the ads. Yeah. Click on the ads. Yeah. Um, click the ads. <laughs> I don't think if we have ads on ours, but make sure to watch the other videos because we do talk about the trade secrets, but at the end of the day, if you do need help with kind of the process or we actually have training portal. I don't think everyone really watches the training portal. I don't know if that's Brittany. She tracks the numbers on that, but 
what I've done with a lot of advisors more so recently is I've actually sat in their meetings with them and then they watch me do the meeting and then I don't win them all. I'm probably about one out of five, you know, so 20%, mm -hmm. 25%, depending uh, where it came from. And yeah, we, we do okay. That's all I can ask for. So if you want, mm -hmm. uh, make sure to go to our website, mastermindadvisor.com. Uh, you can book a meeting with us if you need to, or go to our YouTube channel at, uh, just look up Mastermind Advisor Marketing, and you'll find our YouTube channel. Until then, Josh, I look forward to having you back in Michigan so we can have like a normal audio where you're like breathing into the mic and stuff like normal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just kidding, man. Well, enjoy, we're learning. We're learning. Enjoy Arizona, buddy. We'll see you next time.